Aloha everyone, I have a question for you today. Are you living in fear or are you living in faith? Are you living in fear or are you living in faith? You might be wondering what I'm talking about. Well, hi, I'm Brian Ashpole, pastor at Honolulu Assembly of God here in beautiful Honolulu near world famous Diamond Head. It's Wednesday, October 6th, and I'm excited, friends. I'm excited as I am every week because we are looking at incredible scripture passages all this month of October that have the potential to be life-changing. That's right, friends. That is right. If you apply these powerful truths to your life, they can change your life. And today's powerful life-changing truth comes from Psalm 27. In the Old Testament, part of the Psalms, one of the Psalms of David, Psalm 27. Well, let's think about that question. Are you living in fear or are you living in faith? Are you living in fear or are you living in faith? Well, there are many reasons to be fearful today. There are a whole lot of reasons to be anxious and get, you know, getting stressed out. COVID-19, oh brother, are we tired of hearing about that? We have the fear of getting the disease, fear of dying of the disease, fear of getting infected because you think someone else did not adequately protect themselves or you. They didn't, they were, they didn't get vac vaccinated. They didn't, they're not wearing a mask. Uh, they're not socially distancing themselves. They're not six feet away from you. And COVID-19, of course, has had a great impact upon the economy. Long-time businesses are shutting down or reducing the hours. The money just is not there as it has been in the past. And what about all the government turmoil? The debacle, the, the disaster that was, the, was Afghanistan. And now the three and a half trillion, not million, not billion, trillion, three and a half trillion dollar spending bill that some might think is our nation's salvation but others see as an impossible debt that we will never be able to repay. We're never going to be able to pay it off. We're just putting the debt for our children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Well, that all leads to a very uncertain future. So many people are fearful and they're anxious and they're worried and they're stressed out. But friends, we can either live in fear, we can live in worry and stress and hopelessness and unhappiness, or, or we can live in faith. We can live in trust. We can live in dependence upon the Lord. Let's turn to Psalm 27. It's easy to find that book, a book of Psalms. Uh, it's just turned to the very middle of your Bible, halfway. It's halfway between Genesis and the book of Revelation, and there you'll find the book of Psalms. And now find Psalm 27. Uh, well, we can see that it's listed as one of the Psalms of David. And it appears David is facing a crisis. He's Looking at verse 13, he says, I'm confident of this. I'm still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. It seems like he's in a perilous situation, maybe facing potential loss of life. So David begins his psalm with a beautiful statement of faith, strong statement of faith. It's his thesis statement. The rest of the psalm is basically an exclamation, excuse me, an explanation or an expansion of that statement. David makes a strong declaration about who God is in verse 1, and then tells us in the rest of the chapter why that statement is true. Well, let's look at that declaration. Verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God's got all the power. God's got, he has all the authority. We don't need to fear. We don't need to be afraid. We don't need to worry. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Therefore, verse 2 and 3, When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me. Even then will I be confident. Why is he confident? Because the Lord protects me from my enemies, David says. Even an attacking army, a besieging army. No power on earth or under the earth can stand against his authority and supremacy. He is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Therefore, verse 4, David writes, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. David says, I want to be in his presence at all times. David wants to dwell in the house of the Lord. He's ready to move into the tabernacle. Well, thankfully, friends, we don't have to do that. The Lord's presence is not limited to a building or place. 
by the Holy Spirit, friends, we have access, complete, unlimited access into his presence wherever we are, whenever we need him. Praise the Lord, friends. Isn't that glorious? Well, let's look at verse 5 and 6. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. I'm going to be praising him. That's another reminder of not only the Lord's protection in times of trouble, but David also gives the Lord praise for his glorious presence. He's saying the Lord will not only protect me, I'm not just going to survive it all. I will survive like Gloria Gaynor. I will, I'm not just going to be protected. I'm not just going to be su surviving. I will be exalted. I'm going to be lifted up high above all my enemies. Along with the protection of the Lord, God gives us his favor. He gives us his blessing. He gives us the upgrade. Not just protection. And that's as wonderful as that is. He gives us his presence. He gives us his blessing. He gives us his favor. He gives us a wonderful upgrade. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle. He's going to set me high upon a rock. I'm not going to be on sinking sand. I'm going to be, I'm going to be protected in a high place upon a rock. And his tabernacle, will I sacrifice with shouts of joy? I will sing and make music of the Lord. I'm going to be praising God, David says. I'm going to be overwhelmed with praise unto the Lord. I want to give him all the praise and the glory. Let's look at verse 7 and 8. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will see. You see David's desire, his passion to call out to the Lord? See his, his passion to seek after him? David is not just waiting on the Lord. He's certainly doing that. He's going to talk about that in verse 13. But he's also actively seeking the Lord. He's not a couch potato. He's not a sofa surfer. <laughs> Highly waiting around, hoping the Lord will do something on his behalf and kind of lazy in the meantime. He is, seeking, he is seeking the Lord. He is actively pursuing the Lord. Seek the Lord. My, my heart says of you, seek his face. Even my heart's reminding me. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Verse 9, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Savior. David recognizes here and confesses that the Lord is sovereign. He's not a servant at David's beck and call. Now, friends, God is not our personal assistant to make happen just what we want. You know, oh, Lord, I want this, I want that, I want that other thing. He's the Lord of the universe. And he demands and deserves our respect. Or, uh, to honor him. David pleads with him to hear his cry. But he is confident. The Lord is faithful. He's full. The Lord is full of grace and mercy. David's Certain the Lord's going to answer him. Verse 10, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Though Jesse, David's one of the sons of Jeff, Jesse, though Jesse turn his back on David, though his mother turn his back on David, it's not going to happen. But David said, even if they did, the Lord's not going to turn his back on me. He's going to be there with me. The Lord will receive me. Verse 11, teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Doesn't that remind you of Psalm 23, just a few chapters before, another Psalm of David? He guides me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. He, you know, he prepares a table. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. David is confident in the presence of the Lord and his protection. Verse 12, do not turn me over the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. There's there's all these people that are trying to get David. He's not naive. He's aware of his enemies. He's not hiding his head in the sand. He knows that his enemy is out to get him. But he's confident in God's faithfulness. He's confident in God's loving kindness. He is in good hands. Friends, you are in good hands. You have an enemy that prowls around like a roaring lion, the scripture says, seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to, to uh, separate you, to be on your own. But David reminds us that God's protection is there. God's favor is there. God's blessing is there. The Lord's going to lift you high, put you on a rock, and exalt you above all, the, all your enemies, above the enemy. Satan is working hard in these days. These are certainly the last days, aren't they? And he's, Satan knows his time is limited. 
but God's in control, friends. Satan's not in control. The government's not in control. People, the movers and shakers of this world, they're not in control. God is in control. We can trust in Him. We can put our trust in Him. We don't have to worry about it. We can, we can, uh, we can rest peacefully with Him. Then it comes to the climax, verse 13. I'm still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Isn't that a wonderful statement? I often read that when I go visit people in the hospital. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God's not through with you, me yet. The Lord's going to raise me up from that sick bed. The Lord's going to raise you up from that sick bed. Whatever affliction you have, whatever situation you're facing, whether it's a physical need or a financial need or whatever it is, the Lord's going to raise you up. He's going to be, he's going to be uh, uh, intervening on your behalf. David said, I'm still confident of this. See, because of the Lord, verse 1, because the Lord is my light and my salvation, because the Lord is the stronghold of my life, then I can be confident. God's in control. There's no one that's more powerful than him. He's above all, he's above all friends. And, and when you are uh, tempted to miss that truth and begin to worship him, begin to praise him, declare his greatness and power and authority. David was a strong proponent, strong advocate of worship and praise. The Psalms are, are full of that wonderful praise and worship. Because when you begin to declare the might and majesty of the Lord, then you begin to see a bigger glimpse of who he is and how powerful he is and that there's nothing too hard for him and that he can intervene in every situation. He can take care of you. David says, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This is not the end yet. And he finishes with verse 14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Now, why is that important? It's very easy to become impatient, friends. Very easy to rush ahead and make judgment decisions. For example, as we look around at COVID-19 and all these other things that I mentioned earlier, hey, we think things are bad all around me. I don't see the Lord doing anything about it, you know? He's not doing anything with my family. I'm praying for my family. The Lord's not doing anything about it. I'm praying for my health or my loved one's health and the Lord's not doing anything about it. I'm praying for my finances and salvation of a loved one. I'm praying for all this and the Lord's not doing anything about it. He must not care about me. Well, friends, when you start getting stressed like that, we start becoming fearful and worried. Grab your collar. Grab your collar and tell yourself, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Don't make judgments based only on what you see, friends. Don't make judgments based only on the natural and what you can see. We often don't see, we don't often see what God is doing. We don't often know what God is doing because he's working behind the scenes, friends. He is working in the supernatural dimension, the spiritual dimension. He's working behind the scenes so we don't often see or know what he's doing. But like David, we can be confident that the Lord is in control. He's faithful, he's full of grace and mercy and loving kindness. I happened to run across uh, some great thoughts from a gal by the name of Ashley Hooker. And she's writing at BibleStudyTools.com. And she makes these four observations about Psalm 27. And uh, let me share these four observations with you and some of her thoughts along the way. Number one, we can always have confidence in the Lord. David's words are powerful. We may not be fighting battles like David, but we are fighting battles. Each day we fight temptation, greed, and lust. We fight to keep ourselves set apart from this world. In those battles, we experience our enemies rise against us with hurtful word or deeds, words or deeds. But we can brag that even though the enemies come, enemies come, our Lord will defeat them. We can be confident that our God will never leave us. Hebrews 4, 16 states, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. Confident, friends, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. David was approaching God's throne with confidence, and so shall we. Number two, God desires for us to seek Him for ourselves. Today, God still wants His children to commune with Him. He wants us to read our Bibles and learn, about more, learn more about who He is. He wants to hear us praise Him in word, song, and deed. When God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the Garden of Eden, He walked among them. Seek the Lord, commune with Him daily. Number three, God will never forsake us. 
David had spent many years fighting and running. Through it all, he never lost faith in God. He was confident that the God he served would never forsake him. Our God will never leave nor forsake us. He has promised to never turn away from us. In Philippians 1.6, we are told that the one who began a good work in us will carry it on to completion till the day we see him face to face. No matter how bad our trials are or how hopeless we feel, God will not leave us. God is going to be present in your life, even when everyone else has turned their backs on you. David knew he was never alone on the battlefield or in the caves. We are never alone on our battlefields as well. Yeah, David did spend some time fleeing from the enemy, but he was knew that God was with him. And it brought him to a greater place of trust, a greater place of praise. Number four, God is trustworthy. There's the bottom line, friends. God is trustworthy. Inevitably, we will face trials on this earth. We will feel like we cannot handle anything else. Our patience begins to run dry and life seems hopeless. It is in these moments we can trust our God. He is the only thing we can trust. He has proven over and over that he will keep his promises. He will show up at just the right moment to rescue us. We can take that to the bank. Amen. Friends, you can take that to the bank. That's, that's an amazing thing. Now, let me share one more scripture in closing. This familiar portion of scripture, and of course, is Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. And that's about confidence. That's about peace. That's about waiting on the Lord. About not being stressed, not being fearful, not being not having worry. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, Paul writes, do not be anxious about anything. COVID-19, friends, finances, salvation of loved ones, the government, the future, no matter what it is. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Remember, thank Him in advance for what He's going to do on your behalf. Thank Him for His grace and mercy, His loving kindness that he knows your need even before you present it. Thank him for all that. Wrap your request in a bow of thanksgiving. And what does Paul write? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Paul reminds us that along with confidence, along with trust in the Lord, along with waiting on him comes peace. It's been said peace is the measure of the Lord's presence, God's presence. You don't need to live in fear, friends. You don't need to live in worry. You don't need to live in anxiety and be anxious. You don't need to be stressed out. Instead, live in faith. Live in confidence. Live in trust. Live in peace. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful, friend? That is powerful. That can be life-changing for you. That can change your life. Are you living in fear? Or are you living in faith? Are you living in fear? Are you living in faith? Don't live your life worrying about this or that or the other thing, friends. That is a terrible way to live. Instead, declare Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You might need to declare that and quote it and remind yourself of that every day. And then the last two verses, verse 13 and 14, Psalm 27. I'm still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Wait for the Lord. No matter what you see, friends, no matter what's going around you, on around you, no matter what's going down, no matter what seems like it's falling down, wait on the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Take courage and wait for the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Walk in faith. Live in faith. Don't live in fear. Don't live in worry. Live in faith. Amen. Now help me out here, friends. Is Jesus Christ in charge of your life? Is he your master? Is he your savior, Lord? Do you have a guaranteed ticket for salvation? Have you surrendered your life completely to him? Are you living in faith instead of fear? Repent of your sin. Declare Jesus Christ as your savior, and Lord. Put all your trust in him. And friends, and do it today. Do it today. Don't put it off till tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. Do it today. Maybe you've done that. Maybe, maybe you have a response to what I've shared today. Please leave me a comment. I really want to hear from you. Please let me know how you're doing. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching, please leave me a message. Maybe at our website, honoluluag.org. Yeah, just type that in. Go there. It's looking great. Or, or our Facebook page, as I say each week, that's probably where most of you are because uh, on these Wednesday Bible studies are, are, we're seeing a lot of action on Facebook. And if, if you haven't gone there, just go to Facebook and 
and search for Honolulu AG. Or maybe you're not on social media and that's okay. Our YouTube channel would be more convenient for you. Just go to YouTube and search for Honolulu Assembly of God. And friends, when you get there, would you give us a like and or, or subscribe or do both? And please share our website, our Facebook, our YouTube resources with others so they can be encouraged also. If you've been blessed, if you've been inspired, been encouraged today, would you pass that on to someone else so they can be blessed, encouraged, and inspired also? Well, we're going to pray in just a few moments, friends, but let me share one more thing I'm excited about, and that's this Sunday, October 10th. As I'm excited every week, this Sunday, we're going to continue our new teaching series in the morning worship service at Holy Assembly of God. That teaching series entitled Freely Give by Considering the Beautiful Gift of Forgiveness. God has lavishly forgiven you. Jesus Christ has lavishly forgiven you. Receive that forgiveness. Live that forgiveness and give that forgiveness. Pass it on to someone else because what God does to you, he wants to do through you, friends. What God does to you, he wants to do through you. Please join us in the building at 1035 a.m. for the morning worship service. And if you cannot join us in person, please join us online for live broadcasts on Facebook or a YouTube or a YouTube channel. It happens every Sunday morning, 1035 a.m. Well, you ready to pray, friends? Ready to join me in prayer? Let's do it. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that I do not have to live in fear. I don't, know, I don't have to live in worry. I don't have to live anxious or stressed out, Lord. I pray that I might cast all my cares, all my anxieties, all my fears, all my worries on you because you care for me. Lord, when I present those to you with thanksgiving, Lord, you give me peace in return. You are the stronghold of my life. Lord, you are my light and my salvation. Therefore, I, I'm not going to fear. I'm going to have confidence. And I'm going to wait on you, Lord. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to take courage. And I'm going to wait on you. And I pray that, Lord, not only for myself, but I pray that for everyone watching, every man, every woman, every young person, every boy, every girl, Lord, that they would look to you to be their Savior, Lord. They would cast all their cares upon you. Give, they would give you all their fears and worries and anxieties and stress and instead we live in faith live and trust in you live in confidence live in peace thank you for that in jesus name i pray amen and amen well friends god bless you jesus loves you aloha and aloha keokua god loves you god is love well there's more life-changing truth coming up right here right where you're watching. So I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, friend, God bless. Aloha. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.